The Labor Day weekend sale is on at Tanger Outlets. Score up to 70% off at top brands like Nike Factory Store, Crocs, J. Crew Factory, Gap Outlet, and so many more. Refresh your wardrobe with the latest arrivals for less from all your favorite brands this Labor Day weekend. Tanger Outlets, always on trend, always on sale. Plan your trip at Tanger.com. Hashtag no music, no intro. Tuesday night, Saints Block Party podcast. Been a very active day in the NFL. Today was the deadline that teams had to trim down to their 53-man rosters. And the Saints did that as well. Um, what is What is going on? Like, what is going on? This is ah here we go, um the the joys of live podcasting. I don't I don't I we I can't even start the conversation about having a breakdown of the of the team's roster because of some shenanigans that that only the New Orleans Saints can can do only the Saints can do. only the Saints bro only the DA led Saints. That, thank you, thank thank you for putting that for putting that on it because it it is very specific um, to Dennis Allen. So give me a second. I don't know why it's not showing up on Twitter. Um, love this for podcasting. Elon Musk. Oh, fucking up our money. That's what's happening. Um, uh, uh, uh. All right. It should be on Twitter now. I want to read you. I'm going to, speaking of Twitter, I'm going to read you a quote. Uh, this is, this is what we fucking get for putting shit on Twitter. All right. There you go. Good to go. I'm going to read you. I'm going to read you a quote. This is what Ross said. He was at the press. He was at the DA presser. Shout out to our, our, our girl, Captain Terrell, because I, I I knew Captain was going to ask about quarterbacks. You know it, bro. I, I, I was I was I was just, just waiting for it. So let's get down to business. She said, Let, "Let's not stand on ceremony here, Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> we are both initiated, nigga." <laughs> Saints head coach Dennis Allen says that he wants. He wants the backup quarterback competition to remain throughout the season. Not ready to make any declaration on who the quarterback two is at this time. I'm gonna read that line for you one more time. I, I cause I just I I, I need to process it (laughs) he wants the backup quarterback competition to remain throughout the season now if Derek Carr goes down and I'm not wishing this upon him but if Derek Carr were to go down in week one against the Panthers Jadavian Clowney Trevor Penning just whips on his block boom Derek Carr just gets rocked boom right first play Again, we are not putting out this out there saying that we hope this to happen. Oh, absolutely not. No. But if that were to happen, you're telling me that because there's a there's a competition going on throughout who <laughs> no, right? I'll say this. Isaiah Foskey is a hundred percent lucky tonight, nigga, because he get, he get a little a little reprieve right now, bro. <laughs> Oh, 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 for sure. Because he would have been leading the podcast. Oh, no, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh. a little easy right now, Mr. Foskey. We can get oh. to you later. We're going we to get to you. Uh-uh. <laughs> Setting you to the side. I texted this to you, bro. And I, I said, I said, this is hell. This is hell, hell bro. <laughs> hell, we, man. We understood to a degree, I think, or had a 
vision of how things may be post Sean Payton, mm-hmm. post Drew Brees. Whatever I envisioned, maybe and maybe I was naive or whatever. It's ten times. It is ten times, twenty times worse than I thought it could have been. Not like this, and like not like <laughs> this, not like this, because it's it's weird, bro. It's so weird. It's not. It's not just bad. Like I don't know. Like just bad. You know what I'm saying? Like just, but it's just weird kind of bad. Where, where it's like you, you could do so much better. Like the the right answers are right in front of you, and they just choose not to take them. Like you know what I'm saying? It's like exactly. It's I I, I don't get it. This this baffled me. I mean, it, it didn't baffle me because it was such a da thing. Like it was right. It was right in line with who he is and who he's shown to be. So that's the thing. Like. The decision in itself, I could, I could criticize that, but it's the decision in the context of who's it coming from. You know what I'm saying? Right. And it's just such a it's such a DA type of decision where all he preached was competition all mm. summer. All mm. he preached about guys trying to get spots, guys jockeying for one position, one position, competing, competing, competing. Does the whole thing in the third preseason game where – uh, Hannah gets one quarter, then Spencer gets another, mm, then uh, mm, uh, compete, mm, compete, mm, compete. Mm, 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 mm. After the game, he's like, you know, I, we're gonna see, we're gonna look at the tape, blah 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 blah. <laughs> then when the when it's time to when it's time to put your name by decision, just Not put your name down. by. We're gonna compete throughout the season. <laughs> you know, those, those guys, watch the present. Those guys are still competing, and they're still going to compete throughout the year. Blah 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 blah. Like, what are you talking about, bro? What are you talking about? You talking about the backup quarterback position? How about a backup quarterback, bro? Like, who's the backup? Just say it. And if or don't say it, don't say it. Just say, look, we know who the number two is, but we'd rather not put that out right now. Or say both guys aren't ready because essentially that's what he's saying. Even though I know that's not what he believes, essentially is what he's saying is neither guy is ready. And if that's the case, you need to bring in a vet. But I don't think they're gonna do that either. Nope. So what message are like what message are you trying to say? Like, I know if I was Spencer or Hayden, I'd be like, man, like this is some bullshit. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's just how I would look at it. And here's the thing, and and you you've tweeted this, I've tweeted this today. At some point, it's gonna be seen who the, the backup who quarterback two is. That uh-huh. person gets the other bulk of the snaps on game week leading up to a game. And the other quarterback, who is the quarterback three, runs the scout team. So See? even if you don't come out and say who the backup quarterback is, we it is going to be reported who the backup quarterback is. Oh, I will can't... It? Oh, will it? <laughs> I can't... I'll say this. I can't divulge some things that I know about the situation. But I will say this. I believe I said it on the podcast uh, about like a month ago or in the Discord is that there the starting quarterback on the team was pushing for Jay Kaner to be quarterback. I, I've talked. I've said this. I've said this. Why? Why would the starting quarterback of the New Orleans Saints want Spencer Rat or sorry want uh, Jay Kaner to be quarterback or be the backup quarterback and not Spencer Rattler? I don't know. With the Fresno State, that's, is that why? <laughs> why? You know, if it if it's if it's white, it's right. I, but but even Spencer got like I got the I got the other I got half of it. Like I'm half right. I'm over there. I'm half right, nigga. Like, or it just might be that you know. There's a, a starting quarterback for the Northern Northern Saints who knows that if Rattler was quarterback too, and if he were to get hurt and get dinged up and had to go out for a quarter or a half of the game, that he might not get his job back. And if you and if you if you believe one that he isn't that sensitive, and that the Saints as an organization isn't that sensitive to the outside <laughs> noise, I don't care what they say. 
<laughs> and every person is like, oh, we don't listen to the outside noise. Stop we fucking know. lying to me. We know they listen to the outside noise. And that's the thing that got me about this decision because it's not a football decision. It's not. It's a it's decision not, based. It's a public relations decision, and that that's just that's the worst place to be at a franchise, man. Where you making actual decisions about your team based on the outside noise, as much as they preach about that, they don't listen. Oh, they absolutely listening. They are listening because the mm-hmm. it, the Spencer Rattler the agenda started getting loud. That shit started getting really loud, boy. Hey, can can, I, can we can we say this though? Can someone run us our fucking check about that shit? Can 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 we can like we don't we don't like to take credit too much. Hey. But but there has not, and I want to give a little shout out to our dude our dude Rob on on Twitter cuz I stole the agenda from his tweet of just delete that. We right. got an agenda to push. We got to push it. Got an agenda to push. He get twenty percent. He get twenty percent. Twenty percent. Hit us up, Rob. So can we just get it like a, just a, a just a minuscule little a little bit of credit? And it got loud, Ryan, because people aren't fucking lying. Right. It's not just like Saints fans. It's like people that just watch NFL. You know, Jim Nagy. Not- you know. Just- you, you were talking about the outside noise, right? <coughs> one, of the, one of the most hilarious things I've I've seen yesterday, Alante Taylor. You know he you know goes on Twitter hyping up Spencer, seeing like oh, falling out, seeing all the highlights on my timeline, blah blah blah, right? And so us as Saints fans, we just like we know, mm-hmm. we know, we know. We know Tay, like we see it too, bro. And then for whatever, for whatever reason, whatever reason, whatever reason, this man had to put out like a follow up tweet saying, "Oh, you know, I'm a D- DC four number one." I'm like, stop all this QB one talk. <laughs> what? Our our dude Kevin was said, Nicky Lemus had a gun at his head, saying, "Nigga, you better put that tweet out right now, nigga." Hit send, hit send. <laughs> Oh, somebody, baby, car, car shot him a little text like, "Hey, man, hey, man, that's... hey, buddy, can you correct this for me?" <laughs> let me let me point out what a huge a huge difference of Drew Brees and Derek Carr, and I would never compare them in any way, but I would just want to point this out because it's such a salient point. The Saints drafted. Garrett Grayson, third round, 2015. Was it 15? Oh, my God. If I knew that off the top of my head like that, I'm a big fucking sicko. I don't know. 14 or 15, one of them. I want to say, I want to say it was the P draft. Hold on. Uh, the P draft or was it the... If, if was it was, the, some, someone please draft. fucking... Someone please... Um, God damn, someone... Can I go to a, a mental institution, nigga? How do I know that in my head? Just sit, Ryan. Just sit, sit, man. sit. I know that because, shout out to Saints legend, Brett Hunley <laughs> should have been drafted by the way. Right. I, I digress. So they drafted Garrett Grace in Colorado State. God damn, I'm a sicko. Um, in the third round. And it was one of those things that was kind of understated for a while, but then the story came out that Drew Brees was like, oh, oh, y'all, okay. Like, even that, the fact that he got drafted in the third round, Drew yeah. was like, <laughs> watch this, and just went ham. All yeah. trait, like, just complete. And Greg Grayson was not a good football player. He wasn't a oh. good quarterback. It, no. it, didn't, it didn't matter. Didn't Drew matter. said, you trying to potentially draft someone that may be my successor, and I think you ha- Drew had that mindset because you have to realize what he went through when he was in San Diego. Oh yeah, right. Philip Philip Rivers drafted in top top five. Like they, he was always being doubted. So once he got to that right. level of showing how just... dominant he was, he's like, "Y'all drafted him, bet." And yeah. he took Michael the McCarthy. challenge. Yeah, took the challenge exactly. to say the quarterback of the Saints right now absolutely does not have that mentality one 
iota. He is no. a sensitive, sensitive, listens to everything and everything affects him. And that, I, I'll, I'll just leave it at that. I'm, I'm not going to say any more than that. No, I'm glad you, I'm glad you pointed that out, bro. I'm glad you pointed that out because it just shows you the difference in how they built. You know what I'm saying? Like they just, just built, built different. different. Cause Drew was going to let the game speak for him. You know what I'm saying? He's like, I'm just not going to let you take my job. I'm going to, that's when he started, that's when he started talking about him playing until I'm 45. Sure. I'm like, what? Man, stop it. He playing at 45. He got close. I'm like, damn. <laughs> you know, but that's just the mentality he had where it's just, he just gets such a loser vibe from this organization right now, bro. Just loser. And that that's just, I'm sorry, mm-hmm. bro. That DA shit was, that was just some pussy shit, bro. Just like a pussy, man. Pussy, bro. Like, it, like I, it, expected it, him, it, I expected him to pick Jake Hayne as QB2. And I, would, I, I was ready to take it. I was ready to take it. Like, whatever, for whatever the reason, because 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 you like Hayne the better, whatever. I would have took that. But to do no decision, it's like a half measure, man. It's like it's worse than all it's worse than all other decisions. Here's the thing though, and I and I said this in in an audio message in our Discord. It's the almost exact same thing he did last year with Trevor Pennant. Yep. The diff he made he made a decision last year that Trevor Pennant was gonna be benched, but he lacked the whatever fucking fortitude to be a man. Or I don't want to say man. I don't want, I don't want to come out as a as a as a sec to be a person that has any type of accountability and any type of just standing on business that can go and say, hey, Trevor, we're gonna bench you right now. You know, we 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 still believe in you, blah, blah, blah. No, he puts a hit piece out on him through a subscription website. This is the exact same thing, and just like I can't make a decision. So I'm just not gonna make one. I can't stand on a decision. It is. Lack of leadership. I've, I've ne- <laughs> Thank you. Complete lack of leadership. Yeah, I, I don't respect it. I just, I don't respect it, man. And people gonna say, "Oh, it's just because you wanted uh, Spencer Rattler to." It ain't got nothing to do with it because however it's gonna play out, it's gonna play out regardless. You know what I'm saying? Like talent is gonna win out. So I'm not, whether, you, whether you put two or three behind Spencer, I'm not worried about that. You know what I'm saying? But it's just the. It's the just the loser mentality that's coming out of this organization right now. That we want to, I want to root for the, this organization right now. I want to root, so, and I'm so going to root for. We all going to root for because I'm because I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. And I'm a fan, <laughs> and it's just what I'm gonna do. But God damn, why they gotta make it hard? Like why y'all making it so hard to root for this team? Something, <laughs> Ryan. Something that's so easy. They 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 took it and just made it like how to make. Who picking QB2 is worse? Like, how do you take something so simple, nigga? So simple. Just give a name. Just give a name. No, no, no. No, no, no. On top of that, they make it like something that should be exciting for the franchise. Like, okay, you had like a young quarterback that's coming in that's looking promising and something that should be Everything you wish for as a football team that you hope you can get when you draft a quarterback in any round, but it's Actually, when you draft a quarterback in the fifth round, bro, you hoping, man, we taking a dart throw, and hopefully this this guy can be maybe a decent backup in the league. That's it. That's it. And now you potentially may have someone that could be a a starter. A, I just, uh, this is wild, bro. <laughs> this is absolutely wild, wild right now. Never seen anything like it in my life. I, I remain, every day I feel like this team does something that befuddles me more, but then I'm like, I shouldn't be befuddled. Like, you know what I mean? I'm trying to think, has that, has this, I'm trying to think, has this ever happened with any I, team? I can't recall. Like, I know I've seen coaches, like, say a quarterback gets hurt, and then, like, the following week they'll be like, look, we're not going to let you know who the, who's going to start yeah, the game. I've, for seen, sure. I've seen that a thousand times. T- uh, but, Sean Payton did it with, before yeah. Taysom was announced a starter. Right. We've seen that a, a lot, but to just be like, our two young guys are going to compete all year because and here's here's what people were saying on my timeline. People that were trying to give them the benefit of the doubt and all that. They were like, "Hey, look, they're both young. They they none of them have NFL experience. So he's do, what he's doing makes sense. He's just saying that they're on the same level." And that you know they 
he's not about to identify and declare one of them as a winner of the QB2 position because they still compete and they still have to show that they're worthy of backing up. And if my response to that, then you need to go out and get a backup quarterback then. If you still right. don't know, if you still are questioning that position, then you got to go and get P.J. Walker or uh, I don't anybody. You know what I'm saying? I heard Jameis is available by the Browns. Huh, huh. Try to bring him back, but you know that ain't going to happen. Like, it's not making no sense. It's not making no sense. No way you dice it, cut it up, deliver it to me, bro. It's not and making it, no damn sense. And then my retort to, to that point of people were saying to you is that if they're saying like it, or the argument is that they're they're equal, well, one player's been in the league for two years, even though he's been hurt and blah, 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 and another player is a rookie. So like if if it's on equal ground and a player has been in the league for two years and they're about equal, usually the fucking tie goes to the younger player. Anyway, I we can talk about this forever. Uh, our dude Tony in the, chat, in the chat said, could have just said something like, we think Rattler needs a year as a quarterback three to develop to really get the best out of him. That simple. That simple. Simple. Would there, would there have been would there have been blowback and pushback by sure. hashtag the agenda? Absolutely. But at least it would have been a decision. Who cares if you get blowback? Fuck a goddamn NFL team. Every <laughs> speaking of fucking blowback with these niggas, can we make a segue? Why is Isaiah Foskey on my fucking team, Ryan? Why is he on my team? I give me a reason. Give me one reason. Give me one thing. Y'all in the chat, please tell me, because maybe I'm ignorant. Tell me one thing, positive thing he brings to the football field. Just one. I'll wait. Anybody? (laughs) Somebody. (laughs) He was drafted in the second round. That's it. That's it. That's oh, the reason. Technically, be is what is hard. Right, just, just, just JK. Um, Dante said, "Big ass head." Uh, Demon time slime. Sunken, sunken fallacy cost or yeah. something called whatever. I, don't, don't go there, Bajan. Don't have the energy tonight. Um, <laughs> Erika in the chat is. Uh, boy, boy, don't even have a personality. Come on, man. I don't even see a personality on the field. Like, even even Peyton Turner got a little personality. You know, he's, hey, you know, just 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 vibe. Just vibe. Always just not vibe. smiling. <laughs> they like, said um, Foskey like an extra, bro. Like he in the movie. Like he don't even got extra, no no, no a, lines, nothing, bro. Just an NPC, bro. Like what 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 are you doing? What are, what are we doing here, man? An NPC pass rush. And I and I said this on Twitter. I said it, it goes back to the point that we that you made early in this podcast. And we've talked about on this podcast before. I just have to tell I just have to tell Jay to turn the AC on downstairs because I'm fucking preaching right now. I might have to take my shirt off in this bitch. These niggas got me, oh, no. Ryan, hot. Um, you can't preach all that shit about competition and just talk about it. How competition, competition, competition. I said, pull up, pull up the pressures and the sacks for Lalos in his two preseasons and Isaiah Foskey in his two preseasons. Just pull them up. You couldn't, you can't argue that Isaiah Foskey deserves to be on this team because I know what's going to happen every fucking game week, nigga. In in Isaiah Foskey, <laughs> just take it up a spot. <laughs> Just take it up a spot, bro. Make it make sense. And I I know their argument is going to be like, look, we believe it take, takes about three years to really, you know, show if a guy is, you know, ready. You know, it takes a while to develop some guys and blah, 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 blah. They're going to point to whoever, whatever player from the past. Be like, hey, look, you know, he didn't Trey really Henderson. start showing thing. Yeah. Trey Henderson showed he was a pass rusher literally – his second year, second year, first year he's hurt, I believe. Second year, yes. you immediately saw, okay, this guy's a speed rusher, period. Like he, he, 
And over time, he developed all the other things that, like, okay, he's a starter. Jeff Fosky has not showed anything. Nothing. Like, nothing. I, it's so rare that you see a player that'll show nothing. Like, I'm being very generous, bro. Like, I'm usually I'm real generous with players. I'm like, oh, well, he does this well. Oh, he does. Oh, but I could see it if you put. Even Peyton Turner, who's we've given hell. No, even bro. him. Even him. You could squint and see. Like, okay, he I've seen a pressure here and a pressure there. Yep. Like he, he could be a fourth, you know, your fourth defensive end, your fifth defensive end. He belongs on the team. He might play some special teams. You that, know, that's, the, what, that's what Tony said. He said at least Bond, at least Bond was a good special teamer. Bond was Bond held two special teams down for years. For years. At least like, okay, well he does bring that to the table. I can't give you nothing on Fosky, bro. Nothing. Prove me wrong. Hard to be proven wrong when you're inactive on game day, bro. <laughs> Poor the Lillos be giving all the effort. All the effort and everything, bro. Just... Oh, I know he calling him all types of names, bro. We calling them oh, names too, Lillos. Don't worry. Uh, Dante said, Fosca has nothing after his initial rush move. He gets blocked and then is the noun factor. Not factor. Non factor. Um... Earlier, Dante said this fan base is literally the picture of a penny sitting on the bench at the open practice. Just... Mm. <sighs> yes. Yeah, we, like, I mean, and what, what what's up with that? Like, I, I, who's, I, 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 I'm, I'm assuming he's the starting right tackle come week one, right? Yep, I would assume. So. Uh, here's well, we should have said this, right? There's probably going to be a lot of different moves made tomorrow. Yeah. I think tomorrow, is like, you could start. Uh, claiming players and 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 all that so teams are not set by any long shot we'll see no way we'll see how what ends up happening we might have to do an emergency podcast depending on what happens tomorrow um maybe we'll see but who knows what they maybe have planned for the offensive line but they don't got anything planned and this is it (laughs) yo wolf what up? I'm looking at you, man, and looking like you getting slimmer, man. And I'm noticing that I'm dropping some pounds. And the last time we did this Vertimax ad, we were a little heavier in our lives. And we can safely say that Vertimax is where you need to be to help improve your athletic performance. No question, man. And look, if you know about Vertimax, you've seen guys like Alvin Kamara jump out the building. How do you think he does that? That's because of Vertimax. Drew Brees, the athleticism he's shown, shaking Falcons players, diving in the end zone. Ooh. It's Vertimax. So, I mean, Vertimax.com, you definitely should check that out, folks, because it's helping everybody. With Vertimax at Vertimax.com, you have the V8 platform. You have the Raptors. They're designed to enhance physical jump, agility, and power. It helps create more athleticism and gives you a foundation to be great at what you want to do. Go check it out. At Vertimax.com, the V8s, the Vertimax Raptor, Vertimax.com. Check it out. <laughs> oh, boy. Um, speaking of that great 2023 draft class, uh, third round pick, Kendra Miller. Uh, I will start the season on IR. Um, <coughs> missing, what, the first four games of the season? Yeah. Missing the first four games. First four games, and then he gets three weeks after that to practice or whatever, and then they decide to move him on the active roster or not. (laughs) That's that that little three week stretch is gonna be very fascinating to be. Dude that hadn't had any training camp, no training camp, and is not known to be the workhorse rehabbing. You know, it's not like he out there just. When you watch receiver, right? You watch receiver, all of it, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You had a player like Justin Jefferson playing with slappies at quarterback after Kirk Cousins went down, and this man was fiending, fiending to get on the field. Did everything he needed. He was trying to do everything he needed to do. Because did he not have a hamstring injury too? If memory serves correctly, like it was yeah. like a like a yep had a hamstring injury as well. Played some games last year, even though he easily could have said, "You know what, man, I'm about to shut this shit down. I'm about to get this. Shut it down. I'm trying to get, about to get paid. this paid. Team ain't going nowhere. Nah. 
That's a mentality thing, bruh. It's a mentality yeah. thing. That's all it is. So right now, you know, they the Saints did release Kabuti. They released James Robinson. Um, the running backs on the team are AK, Jamal Williams, Jordan, Mims, and Taysom. Those are the four. Those are the four. Um, I would venture to guess that they plan to use Taysom in the run game. Oh, yeah. very heavily. Um, my thing is that they're they're, and I don't know how they feel, but it just seems like there are players out there at the wide receiver position and at the running backs position where if they really wanted to, they could get more juice. Um, yeah, I, I, I I'm still a little befuddled to why Jamal Williams is on the team. I mean, I I know why he's on the team, but I like it. It makes no sense in terms of overall i suppose but anything from these cuts and we got 54 concurrent viewers on right now we appreciate y'all um anything from these cuts from the saints or maybe just around the league uh that you're really like tuned into uh i mean not really i mean i was i, I wasn't shocked to see robinson cut but i did thought he provided a little juice he could be one of those guys since he's a vet that gets brought back where they try to you know, because vet salaries are guaranteed after week one of those. So they yep, maybe yep. one of those guys where they just try to maneuver like that. Um, but yeah, they definitely should. I mean, there's a lot of players out there. Like, a lot of players out there. A lot of, a lot of running backs. A lot of wide receivers. Um, I feel like I got a feeling that they're just going to roll with what they have at wide receiver. Maybe it might bring in one player or something. Um, but Running back, I feel, is still open for business. I really feel that way because this team going to have to run the ball. They will have to run must. the ball to be successful. Um, so it's just a must, man. Uh, uh, not- chat said, Saints to trade for John Mechie. Uh, Arika said, Noah Noah Brown for the te- – or, yeah, Noah Brown got cut from the Texans, so he's a free agent. Yeah. Uh, Tim Patrick. Tim Patrick was the Broncos. A uh, bunch <laughs> said Quincy Avery was on my t- on my timeline talking about Rattler, bruh. Quincy fucking Avery. Avery. <laughs> you know what's Legit- funny? The that third preseason game against the Titans, Rattler's performance was for the Saints, not. not just for them, because I know how they think and I know how they operate. That was the best and worst thing to happen for them. Mm-hmm. And I, as he was going off, I said it on the live stream. I said the most Saints thing ever would be he performs this well and they make him quarterback three. And it really has nothing to do with this play. It has to do mm-hmm. with who the starting quarterback is. I said, exactly. I said it. <laughs> dude, dude, like, can, can we get a new script? Can we get a new something, man? Something. Please. Please. Um, the so it's I'm interested to see what they do at safety. They released uh Jonathan Abrams, uh, mm-hmm. Jordan Howden's on the team, Will Harris is on the team. DA was very uh uh like I don't know, secretive when he was asked about the safety. He's like they, they just said that they have a plan and just would not get into it any further than that. I don't know if it means anything, you know, what they got up their sleeves. I will say that a player that I was very high on uh, during the draft when he came out was uh, Louis uh, Lucine from Georgia. He got cut from the Vikings today. His first two years was like super, super like injury plagued. And then sound like this was his first like training camp and season that he was healthy and he was flashing a lot. And then at that point it was kind of like a numbers game. That was some, that was someone that I would be, you know, eyeing because I liked him as a, as a prospect, but because of how the team in the league value safeties, it just may be like, eh, we'll just put Will Harris back there. We just put Jordan Howden back there. We, you know, yeah. And just, and just deal with it. Which, you know, it will be interesting, man. Cause safety, one of the spots that you could only have so long and look, oh, maybe they coach him up. Maybe they coach him up. You know, I mean, they, they, they do pretty well with DBs, but. You can, you can hide position. safeties against against subpar offenses. You can't hide yeah. safeties against good offenses, bro. Oh, no. No, they going – man, come on. I mean, we seen what Sean used to do to him. Sean and Drew. If Ooh. they find a weak spot in your safety, boy, they going to tear you oh. up. Turn oh. you up, man. <laughs> going to tear you up. Turn you up. So, that's going to be interesting. Uh, 
uh, wide receiver. So that wound up shaking out Chris Olave, Rashid Shaheed, Cedric Wilson, A.T. Perry, and who else? Bub. Bub Memes. Yep. And, and when you young. Know, not surprising. Uh, Aquimia St. Brown, he got released. Uh, Bye. Bye. Uh, P- Puka got released. Yeah, Puka. Yep. Not Puka. <laughs> nigga. I wish, nigga. I wish. <laughs> We be doing we be doing a whole nother episode right now. If the Saints had Puka, they just released them, nigga. <laughs> uh, Sam, Samson, Samson, Simpson. Um, yeah, Samson. Uh, Tip, Tipton went to IR, right? No, no, no. That's right. He did. No, he made he made it. He did not go to IR. So he six mm. wide receivers. Hashtag uh, just a tip. Shout out to our dude Joy. That's uh, I'll say this. That is. The fact that he did not play a single down in preseason, he got injured um, after that, starting off to have like a really good training camp, really feels like the team felt like they saw enough for him. And I feel like there's probably someone in the offense, maybe it was Clint, I don't know, someone in the offensive coaching room was pounding the table to keep him on the team for for what, I'm going to say this, I'm going to put this out here right now. There are going to be, it's going to come out at some point, I I would bet money on it that a report will come out sometime during the season that Spencer Rattler at the scout team quarterback is like making crazy plays against the Saints first team defense to Mason <laughs> Tipton. It's going to come out, bro. I, I uh, swear to God it is. That would be hilarious, bro. That would be hilarious. Um, it's going to be they, hilarious when, when, uh, when Spencer Rattler out there working with the receivers after practice instead of call. <laughs> You know, it's gonna come out. So H pair gonna be like, you know, they're gonna be asking H pair like, hey, you know, what do you attribute to your improvement in your game? He's like, oh, you know, me and Spence out there getting it in every practice. Can't wait, bro. He, he did that last year with Jameis. So, yes, I get a lot. I get a lot of reps in with Jameis after Jameis. practice. I'm like, never hear that about Carr. Never hear about after after practice with Carr. Just, just, just. Uh, Chris said, "Got a lot of res- got a bunch of receivers that are burners. Might as well have Rattler let it loose." It's some. It's even something I picked up on during the preseason. Is that when Rattler and, and Hainer were in at quarterback, Clint Kubiak called more deep shots. Yeah, it, more. It was, either he either he called them or they're there within the call, like within the option yes. or the progression or whatever, and. Spencer just the type that's like, I'm gonna take it. You know what I'm saying? Where other quarters would be like, oh, I'm gonna take this, you know, little, you know, this little seven yard hitch here. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna just take that, and keep it moving, uh, and, be, and be late on it. Uh, be late. <laughs> Jay Sean said, "I'm not surprised that Abram got cut. He was getting tore up every snap. Looked horrible. This nigga was like celebrating early on the Nakua uh, return, bro. Did, like whipped on a block. Get him." <laughs> 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 Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Speaking of your point of them with DBs, uh, Rico Payton oh. makes the team. That was the player that if they had cut him and, oh, and left and left Foskey on the team, bro, they they would have heard from me. They would have heard yeah. from me. Yeah, man. And they had a you know, and they had that with John Charles. He got he got to let go. They had some DBs, bro. But I was like, man, you got to keep Rico because you he just he has that look of a. You know, a uh, DB or uh, cornerback that should be playing in this league, long arm. Yes, man. You know, he just he just got that look. So I'm glad they kept him around. Um, the Lou Headley, or, or, go Lou Headley. Sorry. Oh, Lou Headley gone, baby, gone. DA looked like he's about to drop a tip. That's his guy right there. Man, you can't you can't put you can't have a shank he had in the last like. The Titans won that game largely because of that shake, if we being honest. Yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> he was discount said it like on the on the uh broadcast. He was like, Yeah, oh. that's that's a game coster right there. That, <laughs> and it was. Yeah. It was. <laughs> uh so rookie Australian punter or the Matthew Hayball is the mm-hmm. punter. Maybe as of right now, there may be a punter right out now. there that they yeah. you know, that they see that, you know, they may go out and get claim and release Hayball, but at least right now Hayball is the punter. Um and with a team like this that's built with defense, your your offense you, is work in progress. We got to wait and see. 
Mm -hmm. you have to have, you have to have a good punter. Got to, bro. Got to. Because I guarantee with Derek Carr leading this team, bro, it's going to be like those three or four series where it's first down, second down, third down, punt. First down, second punt. (laughs) (laughs) That's uh, Sound like a banger right there. Like, this nigga's low. We've seen down. it. <laughs> yes, bro. We've seen it this we seen it this preseason, man. Mm-hmm. We know they had that 95 yard, you know, drive, but he, that took like two four down attempts. And that was after like three. That was like three, three and outs, you know. And yeah, I get it. It's this preseason, this preseason, but I'm just saying. Uh, you were bringing up the the linebackers. A lot of linebackers made the oh, team yeah. as of right now. Yeah, man, a lot of linebackers. I got to look at the list, but I know Orgy made it. Um, did Rice? Did Rice make no. it? No, he didn't make he it. Didn't. Okay, uh, Rose he got cut. I didn't. I didn't even realize he was on the team until this last game. That preseason game, uh, right? Yeah. So like, look at that guy. Who's that? <laughs> um. Uh. So uh, Ford Ford made it. Uh, Jalen Ford. Yeah, Jalen Ford made it. Um. So it's you know nice looking linebacker. We got uh, De- Demarco Jackson. Uh, you know, obviously the top two. Um, is Nefi still on the team or IR? Nefi still? Uh, he's on uh, pup. I was the actually pup, looking okay. that up. Yeah, yeah. He got that. He got. He tore his ACL like the last game of the season, I believe it was, yeah, it was or something it like was that. Late in the season, I want to say. Yeah, that. yeah. So he's still still on pup. Um, shout out to the. Us on YouTube right now, we got 65 concurrent viewers. What up? Appreciate y'all. Um, this is, you know, how the, the team is coming together. Chris brought up a good point in the chat that I feel like is a very underrated thing. He said, wonder what the deal is with AK's contract. I don't know. I know, right? This is, what, this is one of those things that we just it haven't, haven't, we haven't heard about. Uh, I think they just, you know. Yeah, I think they just made a decision and just kind of, hey, just kind of roll with it. You know, this is his, he going to let his play speak for it. You know what I'm saying? At the right. end of the day. Uh, shout out to Cam W for the Super Chat 199. Uh, Thank you. Why do we always go for random unproven punters? <laughs> <laughs> no, man. I don't know, like... You know, it's funny. Have you watched, I'm, I'm guessing not, but did you watch uh, last week's uh, Heart Knock <laughs> for the Bears? No, I'm... I'm not I'm not caught up on that at all. So they drafted a punter in round four or round five. Mm-hmm. And they had like a little segment talking about him and whatever. Man can punt, punt, bro. Like mm-hmm. him punt. It just goes to show the you know, the importance of having a puncher that can flip the field and and oh, yeah. and, and do things like that. And I think I think it's a, it's a good question. Like they, they, I feel like they feel like they can just find punters and be okay with yeah. the guys that they find, um, and try to maybe not divulge as many resources right. that is needed, you know, to actually get a good punter. Our dude Tony well, said, like, "Are we? You hit on one. It worked. I mean, what? Uh, to Mars? Yeah, it was Mars Day. Was what a fourth round pick? Yeah, man. And I mean, look, he solidified the position for." Him. Over a decade, you know. Um, Tony said, "Anyone we released? Oh, anyone we released that you think we're keeping on speed dial? A, you're the first person we'll call if someone gets hurt. Situation. Oh, that's a good question. Hmm. Like, I feel like, I feel like Abrams will be back on the practice squad. Like, me too. He just strikes me like he'll be back on the practice squad. Um." I don't know. That's a good. That's a good Saint one, Brown. I think Saint Brown. Probably. Yeah. I could, yeah. And 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 uh, Nakua maybe because I thought Nakua showed some things. I mean, a little bit. Yeah, man. He did yeah, for yeah. sure. So I mean, there, there's some guys. You know, there's some guys. It's just interesting. Like to me, I don't know, man. It, it, it's just interesting when you look at this team. Like I was looking at the offense, and I was just like, "Is like take Clint Kubiak out the equation?" Oh. The, the offense is worse than last year. Because, you know, at least you had Mike Thomas for like 10 games last year. Was it the worst? I can't remember. What was the, the yeah. Minnesota game he got hurt? Yeah. Okay. 
But I, I, I like just from like an on paper standpoint, like is it that much? It's not that much different. You know what I'm saying? Like, so they're really banking on Clint Kubiak to flip the script. Fix it. You know what I'm saying? And I think he has a good chance to, like, at least a run game. At least the, the run, run game, game would be better, I believe. I think my my concern, just in terms of just seeing what we've seen in tr- in preseason and even some things like in training camp and some clips, is that I feel like Clint's going to drastically help and improve the run game. But conversely, my biggest thing going into the season is that if Derek Carr remains and continues to be late on throws, not accurate, like like the run game, like it's going to help. The run game is going to help, but at some point, if you're just going to find yourself in the third and seven, and the third and eight, and he's just going to have to make a throw oh. to convert, and you can't, you can't, it, you can scheme that a little bit, but at like some point, bro, the ball just got to be out on time. Boom. Oh, and with a rookie left tackle, uh, a journeyman at left guard, and we think pinning at right tackle. We don't know, like oh, Sa- Sasa Verde made the team. That and Sasa Verde made it. He- he's going on that IR that four week IR too, right? I think. No, I think he missed it. No, he's not going on it because they were oh, talking okay. about that in the presser. Mm, can, can, okay. can we just just uh, just think about last year's draft? Round two, Foskey. Round three, Miller. Round four, Sasa Verde. Mm. That is how bad teams stay bad. Absolutely. So, and I'm trying to give Kendrick Miller, at least, I'll say this about Kendrick Miller, at least you saw tiny flashes. Like, okay. For sure. There is talent there. There's talent. But he has a long way to go as far as just being a professional, um, you know, to take care of his body that cares about the game. Like, bro, do you like money, bro? Like, you can make money in this league, man. Like, like, you know, take care of your body, man. You know, be ready to go. Like, that's a big part, especially at running back. That's like a big part of the game is to be ready right. to go. So, you know, you know, they're going to give him grace and hopefully, and hopefully he just takes advantage of it. Uh, but I, I like if I were, if I was like on the team, if I was a coach or something, like I'm watching him through these four weeks while yep. he's in the R, the R like, how, like, what is he doing? What is he spending his time doing? Right. Or is he just chilling, collecting a check, you know? Uh, shout out to Cam Cam W again for the 199 super chat. He asked, "Are Jamal Williams and Kendra Da guys or Mickey guys?" I mean, Mickey drafted Kendra. Uh, Jamal Williams was just a free agent signer, so I don't think he's quote unquote anyone's guy. Uh, then Jay Sean said, "Jamal Williams is a Saints media team guy." <laughs> <laughs> for real. Yes. Cam asked an interesting question: Which draft is worse? 2020 or 2023? Hmm. Oh, 2020 was rough, bro. Rough. <laughs> you got who first? You had was that Zach Bond? 2020? Yes. Yes. Zach yeah, Bond, um, the tight end. Troutman. Friday, Friday Troutman. Email. Friday Nemo. Who, who is like has completely like turned his career around with Sean Payton in Denver. Also, Lucas Kroll has done the same thing. <laughs> yeah, Lucas Kroll. Get, get, uh, get. Was Payton Turner in that draft? Oh, he's 21. Not Payton Turner, uh, P. Werner. Who? What, what was Pete was tw- Now I gotta make it. I remember. Up. This is old age. Too much football. Uh, it was Reese Bond, Adam Troutman, Tommy Stevens. Oh, Whew. nasty! I would nasty. say twenty 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 is worse because Ryan Brisee is like you don't squint at Brisee and be like, is he good? Like yeah. he's yeah. good. He he's, he's and, carrying a draft. He's and At Perry has like made like yeah s- flashes here and there. So I would say twenty twenty. Is is worse in 2023? But 2003, the thing that makes 2023 bad is that is 2020 had four draft picks. 2023, you had a lot more draft picks, and it still is looking. And Foskey was like a high second, like a high second, and yeah, that's yeah. that's the thing. 
that's the thing. I, I feel like sometimes me knowing the things that I know or things I get told makes things worse. Because had, had yeah. no one ever told me that yeah. the plan was to draft Brian Branch instead of Foskey and Mickey Loomis, like, outruled everybody, it would just be like, oh, shit, like, they 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 just made a, a bad pick, yeah. right? right. <laughs> but then you put the context behind it, and it's just like, just like oh. oh, fuck. <laughs> oh. Um, a lot of Saints fans who happen to be LSU fans are like, oh, Terrace Marshall Jr. has got cut from the... <laughs> He's been a terrible pro. Like, a terrible, terrible pro. <sighs> Like, can we just chill chill but, on the homerism uh, just a bit? Just, just pump the brakes. Like, I, I, I actually wanted to draft him was, was at 2020. Same, bro. Same. But, it, but even then, it was like, okay, you know, it was a guy that could come in. Because we were just thirsty for wide receivers back then. Just like, the man, funny he, thing is, the Saints were going to draft him. And then, the speaking of that fucking that 2020 draft, Sean Payton got cute and then traded in front of the Panthers to get Tommy mm-hmm. Stevens. And then the next year... The Panthers traded in front of the Saints to draft Terrace Marshall in the second exactly. round. And they bo- yeah. they both fucking suck, bro. Suck, man. Suck. <laughs> um. Anyhow, we we just wanted to come on here and just talk about uh, roster cut down, Saints getting down to fifty three, the quarterback to all that. Um, if there is a need, emphasis. If there, like, I'm saying, like, something has to happen tomorrow that really would justify us to do another episode. But if there is, we will do a 15, 20 minute episode, depending on claims. And if there's any trades and things like that. Um, and we'll just kind of go from there. If not, it's, it's, it's the Panthers, bro. Week one, we yeah, will be, these are your new Orleans saints. <laughs> <laughs> the way you just said that. Nigga. Uh... Um, something really quickly. And I, Put this in our Discord. I, I watched a little bit of the DA presser. Um, he looked dejected as hell, bro. Yeah, he like it. It was like he just looked dejected in that presser. I don't know what that means. I I I don't know. All I know I mean, is the man. It could have been, you know. I mean, he had to tell a lot of players like, "Hey, you didn't make it," you know. That's that true. could be emotion. That could be emotionally taxing. Uh, I know I say sure. Sean Payton like that, especially early in his uh, in his career. But towards the end, he didn't care. He didn't care. <laughs> so, like, Get out of here, nigga! Bye, bye. <laughs> playbook, playbook. <laughs> hand it in. Hand it in. Uh, yeah, um, yeah. someone's uh, bu- or I think this is Bunch's brother uh, said. You're gonna be able to tell who practiced with Spence between games because they all gonna, they're gonna be all smiles. <laughs> <laughs> Crystal La- can we just go back to that? Like Crystal Lave told us, but be- like, but Crystal Lave told us, bro. <laughs> told us, man. Man was gleaming anytime you brought a Spence around her this offseason. bro. Just was like, oh, we throw a nice mm-hmm. ball, and it's just he just got talent. Yeah, yeah, uh, Chris, uh, how about, you know, Derek Carr this offense? Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you cannot, you cannot, please understand this. These are grown men who have played football for a very long time. Like, they are professional football players. You cannot fool them. And you cannot lie to them. So, even if they make or made Spencer quarterback three. There are players on the team that's just like, give it time. <laughs> Cause they mm-hmm. know. They, they know. know. <laughs> Come on, man. They know. They know. <laughs> they know when when he threw that ball. <laughs> anyway. Um, they know. <laughs> we will be back if needed this week. Uh if not, we may have like a little little down period until next week rolls around. Um, and then if, if it's next week, it is Panthers preview. We will record it on Wednesday and then there is football next Sunday. And then in two weeks, I will be flying to Dallas. Ooh, man. 
We'll see it in 8K. Oh, bro. They really, they really, I get to really watch Trevor oh, Penning. I got a big, big HD oh. screen hanging on. See it close up. Mm. Trevor Penning against Michael Michael Parsons, booty banded in person, bro. Mm, mm, mm. Thanks, Unc. Appreciate it. Um, <laughs> but we love y'all. We got y'all. Thank y'all for the support. Uh, thank y'all for tuning in. If you are not yet, please like and subscribe on YouTube. If you're listening to this on uh, Apple Podcasts, on Spotify, please give five stars. Uh, you know, Follow. Make sure you get every notification when we put new episodes up. Um, we'll be back this week if needed. If not, we'll be back next week with the Panther Preview Pod. With that, we're out. Peace.